Well, good afternoon and welcome to NLP Talks podcast live. Um, it's so great that so many of you now start to uh, follow us here in this Facebook group. It's the only place where you will see the pre-release. Um, so as you know, with the podcast, what we're doing, so we're now on series four. Um, don't ask me what episode, I can't remember. Um, but um, it's so great that you guys get to come and sit here with me as I interview all these amazing guests live. Um, and then as you know, we usually release these episodes then about four to six weeks after we've recorded them. Um, and then you can go and listen to them all again on the podcast. Um, so thank you so much uh, for taking the time out this afternoon uh, to come and join us. And I am super excited. I know I say this about every episode, but I really am super excited. Um, so do say hello in the comments for us. Let us know that you're here with us live. Um, and um, yeah, we're going to get going um, very shortly. Um, so yeah, we can't quite see your name, but hello to whoever it is that just said hello in the comments. Uh, we very much appreciate you guys being here with us. Um, so without further ado, we're going to get going with the podcast episode. Um, as I say, this will uh, be trimmed down a little bit before I release it properly. But essentially, you guys are going to sit and listen to me and Louise have a chat. Um, and that's about how it works. Um, so um, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome today's guest, uh, which is none other than Louisa Thomas. Good afternoon, Louisa. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <Hello. laughs> um so um, Louisa has, we've just been chatting actually before we came on air, uh, trying to work out how long Louisa has been in our uh, Unleash Your Potential community. Um, and if you'd ask me how long Louisa had been around, I would have said at least 12 months. Um, but we've just discovered that actually it's eight months. She started training with me at the beginning of the year, which is just phenomenal. Um, so Louisa, I'd like to start at the very beginning, if it's OK with you. And I'd like for you to share with everybody, like what brought you to NLP? Were you like even looking for NLP? Like what brought you uh, to, to come and find NLP? Well, I my career was uh, um, HR. I'd been a HR professional for 20 years and a couple of things had happened uh, that got me thinking, OK, where do I want the, my next 20 years to go? Um, and I was looking at um, what brought me joy in my job and what could I really focus on. And I loved coaching um, and I'd experienced it throughout my career. But I wanted to really add and understand why we do the things we do, why we beat ourselves up, um, what gets in our way, all of those sorts of things. And I pretty much, when I started looking, came across you straight away and um yeah so I, I was really interested in it and that's what got me um into nlp and um, it was very business focused it wasn't coming really from a personal position of like i wanted to make changes um it was how can i help others and how can i um add value in the services that i offer so that's how i came about it but little did i know what i was going to get <laughs> along the journey because it's loads more so you know i'm really excited to share anything that uh, you want to know about that cuz it's just been amazing it's funny, right? Because do you know what? I was exactly the same when I first came across NLP. Because like you, my background was in HR. And like you, I wanted skills to be help other people. That's exactly why I came to NLP. So I was like, let me be a better coach. Let me find ways of helping other people get out of their own way. And it was nothing to do with me. It was everything to do with everyone else. Yeah. And like you, little did I know that actually it all had to start here with me first. Yeah. Um, which is which is just phenomenal. Um, and yeah, it's just such. And I just I can't wait for you to share what went on for you. So can I take you back? And I know this is going to be really difficult because you've done all our courses now um but can I get you to take me back um to for you because I really want to focus on you and the difference it's made for you and I know that's not what you came for and I know yeah. you've got what you came for and you've helped loads of people we're going to talk about that later but in terms of you could I get you just to maybe help our listeners understand a little bit about what life was like for you 
before you started your journey with NLP? I sort of love this question, but I now I sort of don't because when I've heard you ask other people, I thought, well, why, how can you not remember? And it's not that I can't remember. It's just when I went, went before NLP, I didn't realize that that was not okay for me, how I was. And I could resolve the things that have held me back throughout my whole life. I was happy, but I, looking back, the light bulb moment for me is how stressed I lived my life. In uh, From as far back as I can remember, no confidence in what I was doing, even though I was really good at what I did, whether that was um, anything I put my mind to. I worked so hard but to put so much pressure on. But the amount of doubt that I used to have about myself, the worry, the way I describe it is just this absolute constant noise in my head that impacted my body as well. But I thought that was normal. And... It was only through going through this journey that I realized I didn't have to live with all that noise and I didn't have to live with all that stress and worry and anxiety. And it was OK to look after me and it was OK to address these things. And actually, it was just so exciting. I can't tell you or explain to people how much of a release it was as I went through each stage to just this calm that washed over me and to build my confidence and to uh, just learn all these skills as well but have that opportunity to address these things that had been had been holding me back all my life so you know a practical example to help maybe explain is um, I used to have to give a lot of presentations attend meetings disciplinaries grievances board meetings and I used to put myself through the ringer the whole week before, the whole of the day I was doing it, the whole of the weeks, weeks after what I should have, could have done, all of that going on. Um, so I thought that was normal. So that's the old me. Let me tell you, that is not, not how it has to be if you don't want it to be. And I didn't, I don't want it to be like that. And it's not anymore. So it's like, oh, I got all goosebumps. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it I love it I love it but you but you're so right because I think do you know what I think it's for so many of us right we 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 tolerate a lot I think yes. in life and we think that the kind of things you've just described but I know our listeners are going to be able to relate to we sort of sit there and we go through life thinking well this is normal like yeah. it's normal to beat yourself up it's normal to put yourself under such pressure you know and that also I remember um talking to someone or oh, several years ago about you know perfectionism right and I'm not saying you're perfectionist by the way I know I used to be but perfectionists <laughs> typically put themselves under huge amounts of pressure to deliver at their best because they're terrified of what the consequence is if they don't and yeah. so that pressure that we put ourselves under to absolutely be on our a-game all the time every time at every meeting and all of those things it's exhausting when that isn't how your brain is programmed because the yeah. effort you have to put in to convince to yourself that you'll do a good enough job it, it just it just doesn't come naturally does it it's like a massive effort um to do that um but yeah I, I love it I love it I love your description of going to like board meetings and presenting and, it, and it's exactly that isn't it yeah it's and 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 to be honest I was like that in my personal life as well as much as all the love I was surrounded by and I'm surrounded by I would bring that home and I would expect the house to be perfect. It, there was just noise, Laura. That's the only way I can describe it. It's just this constant. Um, and I coped with it very well. Someone described it to me as for them. It was like a swan on the surface. Everyone thinks you're coping just great and you do it oh so well. But actually, no, it's hard work. You are working like hell under that water constantly to keep that up and and, and don't get me wrong, it wasn't a facade I wanted to do it it was just hard <laughs> it was just hard yeah no no absolutely absolutely no I can totally totally get that so I remember us having a conversation at the end of your practitioner course and I know that you were absolutely in 
or at what you'd achieved, how you'd seen everybody around you to, to achieve. Um, and this is going back to January of, of this year, wasn't it? Um, and I remember us having that conversation. I remember you saying to me, oh, my goodness, if this is what prac is like, like, what's Masters going to be like, Laura? Like, oh, my goodness, and all that. So for people that are maybe watching this that don't understand the uh, practitioner program, maybe they haven't done it yet, maybe they're considering doing it talk to people a little bit about what it was like for you because it does do this two-pronged thing doesn't it? it it absolutely gives you tools to be able to help other people and you do live on the course and you literally see people transform in front of you on the course and you're like oh my goodness I've, I've done that and I've helped them do that and it's like ah and then there's the other part of it which is the change that you make in yourself as part of that program and, and I very much I see Prack as delivering both of those things yeah so tell everybody a little bit about your your experience of the practitioner course and what it did for you personally and for your business yeah I mean it was really interesting because the first day that I walked in you asked all of us what we wanted to get out of it personally you wanted us to check in there and you're very clever Laura by the way um, you asked <laughs> us what we wanted to personally get out of it and I naively said I would like to be able to speak confidently in front of people I thought that's all I was gonna change for me um but yeah the practitioner course from the very beginning just the learning about how our mind works about how we um how our minds we've got a conscious mind and an unconscious mind and some of these things I might have known on a sort of a high level but I didn't really get it until you explained it and um, how we filter things and really that it got me to realize I can control how I want to be how I turn up and I've made a lot of these decisions unconsciously that have held me back through uh, events that um, have happened in life not necessarily all bad just things that have happened somewhere along the way I decided that I couldn't speak in front of a room full of people I've decided that people are going to judge me and these programs are running in me it was just a whole like light bulb moments going off all the time and then to learn these techniques to be able to change that some of them within 12 minutes was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So for me, practitioner not only taught me to do a lot of things, I actually thought I was sorted after Prac, and I'd sort of put it masters to the side. I wanted to do it because I wanted to know more because I'm a bit greedy. <laughs> Let's call but, it curious, not green yeah, thing. Curious, that's it. Yes, <laughs> I forgot that wonderful word. Um, so yeah, I was, but I really thought I was sorted after Prac. Um, I had, I had such, like I said, a sense of calmness. Um, I had learned skills about communication. I always thought I was a great communicator, and I was to a certain extent. But I learned so many more skills. I was able to offer so much more, not just to clients, but to my family, to my friends, to be able to listen more, to take, you know, understand that it's not for me to solve, HR is all about solving the problem in the moment for people. This is about help, listening to people and finding out what do they need and then being able to offer them, should they want to make the changes, a way to do that and to help them because you work together. So I just thought I was sorted after Prac, to be honest. Um, I was very happy with that journey, more than happy. I was raving about it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it, and it is so true. And I think when, you know, and, and you're absolutely right, you know, and I, and I always joke, don't I, at the end of the practitioner course, but when I ask everybody at the beginning of the course, so what are you here for? Uh, you know, what do you want to get out of this course? And, you know, and public speaking and presentations, um, you know, is probably the, the most popular option that I hear. And at the beginning of the course, we get all of what I call the safe problems, yes. the socially acceptable problems that people are willing to, in front of a bunch of people they don't know, go, oh, yes, I'd like to improve my presentation skills and 
I'd like to be more, more comfortable talking in public. I mean, I can tell, and we had this brief discussion earlier, but I know that if I told the Louisa that I met on day one of your practitioner course, that in eight months' time, we yeah. would be doing a live broadcast on Facebook and recording it, and it was going to be going on a podcast that I run that's had over 10,000 downloads in 96 countries. You would have gone, no, 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 no. Yeah. I don't think so, Nora. No. Whereas you were like, yeah, come on, let's do it. Yeah. And that is so yeah. different. That's that huge is. for me. I can't tell you how much confidence has been an issue in my life. And I, you know, after PRAC, you want to go out and help everyone. You just do. Because you want people to, to know that if they lack confidence or if they've got inner conflicts, like sometimes I feel like I'm good enough, sometimes I don't. Um, or, they, you know, there's lots of things uh or, or even limiting beliefs about themselves. Like, I can't do this. I can't stand in front of people and talk. Or I'd never be able to do that. You want to be able, because you know you've got these tools and techniques. You want to help everyone. I've learned that you need to, to wait for people to come to you. Um, but that's how you just want people to know there's a way you can make these changes. Because I didn't, I don't know. It, I never came because I actually this is a point I would like to mention it's really important to me it's the first time in my whole life I sat and I thought what do I want for for my life so when we do the goal um setting that was really powerful for me because even just that so to be honest on that first day the reason I said it was about speaking because I didn't really know what what I wanted so it's just a great to have all this this these these uh, this journey that we go on through prac that you get for yourself as well as learning the techniques to help others so um yeah i could talk all day and all night about this so good luck keeping me quiet <laughs> Listen, I love it. That's one of the reasons I love doing this podcast is because I love everybody having this opportunity to share what it, what it's done. And I always learn, like I know you fairly well, we've spent a lot of time together, but I always learn things that, you know, when you sit down and actually have this kind of conversation with people and you sit there and go, wow, I didn't know that, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's just fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So, and as you and I both know, we could be here all day and I'm conscious we don't want to do that. So yeah. let's move on. Um, so after you did your practitioner course, you then did our certified coaching uh, course, which is the kind of, I describe it as like the four day top up. Um, it qualifies you as an NLP coach and gives you two additional skills as in hypnosis and timeline therapy. Mm. Um, and so tell everybody a little bit about what it was like for you going through that extra course like what was the kind of the main takeaway for you from having done that extra bit I didn't know what to expect from that course to be honest because I I just I wanted it all at that moment when I'd signed up and um, at the end of uh, PRAC we get to experience as clients something called uh, for those who don't know timeline therapy which is about um it's just the most amazing experience I think I've ever had. Um, that day of that was just mind blowing. So I was so glad that I, it's about, you know, removing uh, our negative emotions and limiting decisions. It was just super powerful. And I think it's worth mentioning here that I came in at a time when I was in a lot of grief and I, I didn't want my grief touched um, on the, the course and, and it wasn't. Um, so you're very much as a client in control of what you changes you make but it was just such a wonderful experience and obviously in coach I get to learn how to be able to do that for other people so I was just like oh my gosh thank god I've booked onto this you know um in a in a row um the hypnosis I think I even said to you I'm not really sure I want I'm interested in hypnosis because I had that sort of you know Oh, well, I've seen people do it and make fools out of people. But that I just that just goes to show what an open mind can do. Go into into things in life with an open mind because the experiences you have hypnosis to experience it. And, and when I do it for others, I just love it at that that level. We do this the deep relaxation. Um, uh, it's a beautiful experience. 
So yeah, I just got so much out of those. So many things on that coach course that I use so much. It's uh, anybody who wants to be a coach and is doing the prac, you know, I I strongly recommend that they they do that coach to follow up because it gifts you just so much more. It's just a lovely, powerful or empowering um wonderful course um that you can just go and help so many people with god i am I going on and on aren't i laura <laughs> no you keep going you're doing a perfect job you're doing a perfect job um, one of the things that people often say to me and i don't know if this applies to you but a lot of people say that as long side all of those amazing additional skills because you end up with this whole massive like when you put practitioner and the coach course together those 11 days those four qualifications and hours and hours literally of work yeah. that you've done earn those um you know you've got a huge toolkit to be able to help a lot of people but one of the things i i know people usually say to me is when they've done that extra four days it's really where their confidence starts to soar with the toolkit did that happen for you as well oh yeah absolutely um it, it it beds everything it really just it because it gives you so much when you say an extra four days it doesn't sound like much but you, you know it is it's what you you do a lot of prep for the courses but you also they they're crammed with all these juicy all this juicy stuff and those four days are just take you to the next to the next level um it's yeah, gave me so much confidence and gave me the 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 knowledge skills to be able to really, I feel, go and help others, you know, as well as embedding myself that hey, yeah, you know, I am the right, I can help people with this. Um, so yeah, confidence is a great word. It's the uh, confidence, empowerment, you know, belief in yourself, um, and the the desire to go and help other people with it. So with that in mind, I know you made the decision um, at the beginning of this year, having done those two courses, um, to change direction. And we'll come on and talk about your master practitioner program um, that you've recently done in, in a while. But I just want to pause for a moment because... I remember you having that light bulb moment and I can't remember on what day it was over the yeah. two courses. I can't remember, but I remember you having a light bulb moment and you kind of saying to me, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to help yeah. people and I want to do that. And I think, you know, I remember you saying, you know, you were in awe at what you changed about yourself and what you'd seen other, and you were just like absolutely adamant. Um, and from a business point of view, obviously, you've been a hugely successful HR professional for, for a good number of years. Um, and I just want to talk, I'd love you to talk people through that kind of decision, if you like. And I think it was fairly instantaneous, but that decision about all of a sudden you having the confidence and the courage to follow your yeah. passion, because I know your story is going to inspire a lot of people. Right. Far too many people, in my opinion, um, stay in jobs because it's all right. Yeah. Life too short in my opinion for all right like yeah. you know so help people understand how you went from a job that to you was better than all right I mean I know you enjoyed it in part and you, you know you got great results and you were hugely successful at what you did but that transition from from that to having the courage to follow your passion I just think it's amazing I think um I, I'm just thinking where to start with this yeah, I mean, my career pathway. I knew I knew I wanted more, but you know, when when you're going through life and people say, oh, "If you win the lottery, or if you um, could do any job that you wanted, what what would you do?" And I had I I, I couldn't answer you, and I thought that was so. I I think that's really sad. That I'd never really checked in with myself to really think about who. Uh, what I would like to do, what brings me passion in my, because I invest it all in work. Um, you know, I'm very work focused and I was thinking, and and the HR side, and I, I respect it because I've done it. And and some for some people, it's it, that's it. That's what they want. And I respect that. But for me, it wasn't ticking all those boxes, but I didn't know what, but on the course, 
I had this moment or and they, they, they were little sparks that were going throughout the course and I was thinking this is this is it this is me this is because I always I love helping people and working with people to resolve things that are going on but I actually wanted to work with people at that the the deeper level to make changes to make their life better and someone said to me um today actually um that in life we're taught all these things about you know life's too short or you're only on this earth once and but you're never really given the tools to to really go and practically take that on board um and this was it for me this was a way to work with people to help them work their stuff out and help them define where they want to be. Um, and some people are on it. They know what they want. They know how they're going to get there. And, and that's great. But the majority of us aren't. And we might look all happy and laughter on the outside, but inside there's all this stuff going on. And NLP gives us a way to really make those changes that people want um, very quickly um, without really, you know, a lot of it is content free, um, without, it, there's just so many benefits to it that, you know, it, it, incredible. But for me, it was that moment. And particularly around the time just before I came on the course, I'd lost both my, both my parents within a year of each other. And my mum was just this most amazing woman. She was incredible. Hence, my business is incredible, you. Um, and I, oh, it got me thinking that, People don't, all these people who were around her, her friends, her family, loved her, thought she was amazing, thought she was beautiful, incredible, confident, funny. But she never, ever saw herself in that way. And then I got to think, I know so many people who were exactly the same. We walk around, beat, as you mentioned earlier, beating ourselves up. And I thought, this is my moment. This is my moment to use these skills, use this knowledge to, if people want, if they want to work with me, then I can help them because that's what's happened to me. And it's not about being self, self-care and looking after yourself and defining what you want and going where you want to go and turning up each day how you want to turn up. It's not selfish. It's not egotistical. It's not those things. You deserve it. It goes back to those phrases. You are you are only here once or whatever. You know, I know people might have different beliefs, but, you know, life is short. All of those things, to me, it, it, it's so powerful, this, to help people be who they want to be, turn up and, and give themselves that self-care that they so deserve. So that it, that's a lot of information. But I now I know how the mind works. I get in that one moment, it went... I just got it in my head and I thought this is it I'm giving this everything I got because this is making me happy um it brings me joy and I want to be able to share it with others so yes Laura that is a long answer to what happened in that moment <laughs> oh my goodness I had no idea half of that was going on in your head in the training room <laughs> all I saw was you know during the week this smile of yours your beautiful smile got bigger and bigger and bigger and you looked healthier and healthier, not that you didn't before, but do you know what I mean? Like literally, it was just amazing. All of a sudden, the sparkle oh. was in your eye and you could just see you were loving doing it. Yeah. Um, but what a wonderful story about your mom. And I know she'd be hugely proud of you. Um, and I just think it's amazing that you recognized that in your mum, recognized it in yourself and then discovered this toolkit that enabled yeah. you to do that for yourself and now you do that for other people I mean yeah. like that's got to be like a job made in heaven right I mean it's like it's my job made in heaven it's it's my heaven it's my that thing now if people ask me for I'm not going to tell you how old I am <laughs> no don't do that I don't but think for a long time, my whole life, but I say my whole life, um, I haven't been able to answer that question. And in 2020, I, I can. Um, and this is it. And um, yeah, I'm, I know exactly what I want to do, what I am doing, what I'm going to continue doing. And it feels amazing. So I know this is going to be challenging to answer this question, and you can not answer it if you don't want to. Okay. 
but, but courage to different people means different things right and you you know your your passion to want to help people was not born in january of this year when you did your course mm. like your passion to want to help people you know as i said to you earlier in a different concert you are one of the loveliest people i know genuinely oh. Um, and you always are doing everything you can to help people. But it, it, was there anything in particular that was that final nudge? You know, if we imagine you stood on the edge of the cliff, like a, about to jump with the most amazing wings and you can soar, what was it that finally made you go, do you know what? This is it. This is me. This is it. I'm going for it. Was there anything in particular or was it a culmination of things? I think it was a combination, but there were certain things I experienced on the course that were really powerful, like um, parts conf uh, parts conflict, dealing with my, um, uh, you know, what was going on inside, this constant battle of sometimes I think I'm good enough, sometimes uh, I'm not, and all these things. So techniques like that, um, timeline therapy, this, I don't know how much you want me to go into here, but for me... No, understanding that in my life I have held on to the negative emotions attached to my memories and they stay with me and they've impacted the decisions that I've made or how I behave and to have that cleared I that for me that moment that day I felt like a weight like I've been I can't even put a weight like and I think I changed that day my face um, the sparkle came back in my eyes, you know, I just felt like, you know, I just like I could breathe again. And the way I described it just after to people was after doing the course and particularly timeline therapy, I walked around, I always had um, tension in my, well, I didn't realize it was tension. I thought I had a back problem. And I also had um, what I call it, it's like a fuzzy chest my chest used to vibrate constantly, like throughout the day, throughout the night, it was just, and I just had this, it just all went just calm. I, I don't have, I am so calm on a day-to-day -day basis now. And I, I, from a teenager or younger, I've never lived like that. So I've never had that feeling of just contentment and calm and yes, things happen and things will come up, but that release of all that baggage, um was just phenomenal so I think that for me and it's like well I think the drive to want to help others like if I can experience it why wouldn't you want to share it if people want it so but I, I think it's something it's the confidence it's the all the techniques throughout you because you get to be a client on the course as well you work on your stuff and you just it's like a tick list it's like okay that's gone that's gone that's gone that's gone and what's even better, you decide how you want to turn it. So what? how do you want to be? Do you want to be calm, excited, confident, happy? You know, how do you want to be? It's like, wow, I choose. I choose how I am each day. That's like amazing. So, yeah, it is a combination. But the timeline therapy was super powerful. And the close second is parts uh, conflict for me. I love it. I love it. Um, and if anybody's uh, listening to the episode um, and you're like, oh, what's parts integration or oh, what's timeline therapy? If you go back to series two of the podcast, I did an episode all about timeline therapy and an episode all about parts integration. So if you're curious about what Louise is talking about, head on over to series two, uh, just scroll back through your podcast app um, or go to nlptalks.com um, and you'll find all of the episodes there and you can fill your boots with learning a little bit more about all those techniques. Um, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, go and check out series two. Um, so uh, yeah, so Incredible You is the name of your business, which I just think is amazing. And I totally get now why it's called Incredible yeah. You because of your mum and because of you. And that uh, just is absolutely, absolutely amazing. And I know that you just love coaching people. And I know you're still in the transition phase of moving from the HR business into the coaching business and, and doing a little bit of both at the moment. Um, but I know the Incredible You is, is what really lights you up. Um, so I'm going to come back to Incredible You um, in a little while, if that's OK. Yeah. Um, and I want to go back to talking a little bit more about 
you. Now we've heard how incredible you came about um, because this is kind of like the timeline, isn't it, of what happened? Because you did the pack and yeah. coach and then you were like, I'm having a coaching business. This is what it's going to be about. This is what I'm going to help people. And then you started setting that business up. And then in August of this year, so just last month, um, you came back um, and you did your master practitioner program. Um, so um, if you can, and you can have as long as you like, please don't feel under any pressure. <laughs> but, but if you can, could you describe for people um, where our master practitioner program and for you becoming a master coach yourself, mm. um, you know, where does that take you in terms of your transformation and your ability to help others now? So I want to start this by just saying that I can remember being sat somewhere and I just thought it was another element. Um, and I can remember you saying it's going to be, you know, this, you, you, you thought you'd sort it's definitely going to sort more. And I sat there and I, I, I think I actually said, oh, I, but I'm actually, I'm good now. Thanks. And you said that, that is what you said. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I thought I said there's more and that just got me excited but oh my word from day one on masters it's mind uh, mind blowing for me it was just wow I thought crack was good but masters was just a whole nother level and it really was I know people say the word journey, but it was like that that all the time in the classroom was just a journey and an experience. Um, I learned so much, so much. And it just takes you to that like super level of just knowing and comfort. I, I would thought I was confident before between Prak and Masters, but this really just well, every day was just more confidence building, more knowledge, more just excitement of oh my gosh there's so many more tools and techniques and but it's what it gives you the um the confidence to really really help so many the flexibility that's the word I'm looking for flexibility to offer so much in in what you do and as a personal experience my breakthrough was just and my breakthrough partner I'm sure she'll watch this at some point I love her dearly. She just did absolute wonders and um, was just in that day. It's said, well, over two days, but it, the final day of my breakthrough was in you literally, I literally changed before my partner's eyes and I could see it as well. It was just incredible. So there were so many things on that one, Laura, um, but it just, yeah. You so said it would offer me more, but it uh, it offered me way more than I ever thought I would get. <sighs> I would say to people, you know, because so many people say exactly what you did. Oh, practitioner was amazing, and I've changed so much. And like, is there more? How can there be more? And I'm like, yeah, yeah there's more. And if you really want to go up three or four levels, like masters is not an incremental one step up. I mean, it's like at least half a dozen steps up. Like, yeah. Isn't it? It's a significant leap up in terms of commitment and time and transformation and what you get out of it. Like it's on a whole other plane of its own. Um, tell everybody a little bit about um, the breakthrough because, um, you know, it's one of the, the highlights for most master practitioners. And like you say, I mean, we could do a whole episode on masters on its own, but let's yeah. not do that. But if we just hone in on, on the breakthrough itself, and obviously on the course, for those of you that, that don't know about it, on the Master Practitioner Programme, it's 14 days, and we essentially lead up to um, everybody working in pairs, um, and I teach you how to do a two-day intensive coaching intervention that we call a breakthrough session. Um, and on the course, what we do is we do some of that work during the 14 days as I teach you how to do each technique. So so a lot of the groundwork, as I call it, has been done before you get there. And then what we do is everybody works in pairs and then you, you work on your buddy for one day and they work on you. And they're long days. And I always say to people, like 12, 14 hour days, like they're long days. But it's the best way for us to engineer everybody having a breakthrough on the course. Um, so this is what and you're, if you ask any of our master practitioners, they'll all tell you the breakthrough was one of the highlights of the whole program. So if you can, and I know it's probably going to be a challenge, but if you can, can you try and encapsulate what that breakthrough did for you personally? 
Yeah, I I literally thought I think we're sorted, and obviously through the techniques that we use building up to the breakthrough day, um, stuff came out that was still um, some some issues I still needed to sort out, and I had uh, my list of things that I wanted to do. So going through the breakthrough is just you go. It is a long day, but it doesn't feel like that at the time because you are clearing so much stuff, making these new decisions, getting rid of every, you. It's so thorough that mm. um, you 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 do. You know, you're going deep. You are getting rid of really stuff that's been around for a long time, probably. Um, stuff that you're really not aware of, but you've got these amazing techniques leading up to it that draw all out what is going on in our unconscious minds and our decision making and how we feel about ourselves and so on. And actually going through the day, um, it's very, uh, I'm going to struggle with this, Laura, but bear with me. It's very odd experience. and It's very hard to explain because when you do get through, when you get to a certain point, you start to check off, you revisit are these things still an issue um, or and there's techniques that that is tested if you like uh, you probably got a better way of explaining it no, no, you're a grand job. one thing that one of the things is that your your list of things get that you've prepared there are issues that you want to resolve get read back to you and you literally <laughs> want to tell your coach to stop talking because first of all I did, I'm not sure I actually put that down. That's how dramatic the transformation is. You really sometimes think, there's no way I would have said that, but you clearly did because it's there in your handwriting. Um, and you almost, I, I said to my coach at one point, oh, please tell her to stop talking because she was, I was boring myself because <laughs> I had just changed my whole way of thinking so much from, um, you know, that I can't, the, oh, I wish I could do this. And it was a bit moany, my list, if I'm honest. I'm being very honest here. I had a really moany list. And I just thought, oh, stop moaning. But it was me who was doing the moaning. <laughs> it's just that was me before the transformation. Um, and what I'd really like to highlight here is, for me, is the impact of it and how it, it, it everyone's different. But for me, it was an instant shift. I've had instant benefits from it. And it's like, I talked about noise earlier, but I really mean this. I know where I am going and I know it's like it filters out anything that is that you don't need to know or don't need to worry about or think about or concentrate on. It's it's that it's like a late. I'd like to describe it as, you know, if you went to a concert to see someone you really loved yeah. and obviously all, you hear all the crowd around and then all the you know, there's all lots of other noise. It's like as if all that noise drops and all you can hear is the person you've come to see. You know, they're singing. You know, it's like it's just you and everyone's still there, but you're so focused on that. Uh, and, and and that's all you you hear and feel. And so it's so, so powerful. Um, and what's it crazy about it is it happened like that transition, because at the beginning of the, the day, you're things the issues or problems whatever people want to call them are still there but by the end of the day they've like gone you are thinking differently you are feeling differently you are hearing things differently and afterwards like I've caught myself on calls or speaking to people I come off the call and I think what just happened there because I knew what I wanted to say I said what I needed to say I didn't worry leading up to the call or you know uh things that would have worried me so much before and I would have had all these things going on it's just like like I said it's just like the noise just drops you know you 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 know you are good enough you're more than good enough you are great at what you do you know what you want to say you know how you want to turn it and yes I got that off track but I I did I didn't get it like I got it now it's like that on steroids <laughs> yeah. I love your analogy of being at the concert and I think do you know what it's a brilliant perfect analogy 
because it does feel like that, doesn't it? When all of a sudden you go from, like you said, the start of the day with this list of things, as you say, that we write down ourselves as the client. I want to change these things. This thinking's not helping these emotions. This triggers me. That triggers me. I've got that problem. Like you literally write it all down. Um, and and you get to, like you say, halfway through the process. When And I still remember it in my breakthrough. And I had a similar experience to you. I said to my coach, I was like, don't be stupid. I said, you're making this up. He went, seriously, Laura, it's in your handwriting. You wrote this down. And I'm just like, really? Did I? And he actually, I made him show me the piece of paper yeah. <laughs> to make him show me. And he was like, look. And I was like, yeah, that is my handwriting. But you just don't recognize it anymore, do you? You just like, like you talked about it being a bit moany and stuff, a bit whingy. But but that's but that is how you were at the beginning of the day, and, yeah. and the ability to get the clarity that you want, the the courage to follow your convictions, to just know the path yeah. that you need to be on. And like you say, with that analogy at the concert, I think it's brilliant because there are always going to be other people around you. There's always going to be other distractions. There's always going to be things that maybe in the past there was a little crisis over there that you've had to get involved in, or one over there, or whatever. But all of a sudden, you've got as you say that laser focus, and it is like being in that concert because I can relate to that myself. It's almost like it's just him singing into me and I'm like (laughs) and it's like no one else is there but in reality is they are but you're so like you say focused yeah um I think there's a couple of brilliant analogies brilliant analogies um I always talk to people at the the prac level just going back to what some of the things you were saying earlier was I liken our training a little bit to like people turning up with dirty glasses um, you know, and so many people turn up, for example, on the Pratt course, you know, and they say, I've got no focus, I've got no clarity, I've got no no direction, I don't know what I want from my life, a bit like you were describing. Yeah. And I think some Pratt is a little bit like me handing you a rag and saying, I'm going to spend seven days teaching you how to clean your glasses. And I remember there was one person, I won't name because I don't have her permission, but she was on the practitioner course. And I remember her saying to me, and it might have been your course, I can't remember, but she was coming up to retirement, a very, very well-regarded professional in her field, and said, I can't write a goal. I don't want to write a goal. I'm coming up to retirement. And I was like, well, but what do you want from your retirement? Well, I I don't know. I don't know what I want from my retirement, but I just want to get to my retirement. I was like, what, does life end for you when you retire? Well, no. So what do you want out of the rest of your life? Really, really struggled to write a goal. And I remember coming in on Friday, I think it was Friday, the course, and she literally walked in as confident as ever into the train, went, it's all sorted. And I said, what do you mean it's all sorted? She's like, I've written it. I said, what have you written? She said, the goal, it's done. It's done. It's sorted. I know what I want now. Um, yeah. And it's just that wonderful feeling, isn't it, of, of not being able to see the wood from the trees to all of a sudden, sudden, you know, I say to people, you know, it's no wonder you can't find your purpose or your passion and your direction when you're looking through dirty glasses. Yeah. But you're not going to be able to see beyond the end of your nose. So let's clean them. And guess what? You get more clarity, you get more purpose, you get to become you, you know, and it's and masters, as you say, just takes that to a whole other level. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, oh, it's amazing. It's so there was amazing. something else I wanted to say as well about and um, the values piece uh, was super mm. powerful for me. Um, and learning about, you know, that we think we know what our values are, that are, you know, um in in our unconscious minds that are one of our filters of how we, you know, take information in and uh, see things. But I thought, well, I'm sure I know what my values are, Laura. <laughs> I should have learned that I, d- you know, better. <laughs> not always. Quite a lot in my training room, but no, not the rest of the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't know what my values were until I uh, was on, on masters and um, it was um, really powerful. And really what was so powerful for me, because if you'd said to me, because I'm even before this, I was quite I was a positive person. I go, oh, yeah, all my values, are, you know, I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. But no, all my values came out that I was away from. That was just so powerful to me. And it made a lot of sense about some of my behaviors or patterns of behavior um, before. And to be able to to. On my breakthrough, every value that uh, following my breakthrough, which a couple of, you know, a few of them had changed for the better, um, 
they were all a hundred percent towards and that wasn't a flip that wasn't that is genuinely and that was just like wow the power behind that for you to I don't like the word power sometimes I know some people but what I mean is the power for me in terms of my energy to just go forward instead I'm not looking behind I'm just thinking okay that's that's where I'm going and that, and that is just amazing I'm not running from anything I'm going towards with laser focus um it, that's, that's amazing so I just wanted to, to uh, just add that for anyone who's on the fence about doing their masters <laughs> just do it <laughs> I love it but you but you're so right and I think uh, you know and I remember having a similar conversation in my head with myself going oh, I know what my values are you know I'm, I'm all about fairness consistency um you know doing the right thing you know and they're all things that I hold dear to myself but like you I'd got no idea I don't think it's until you're actually faced with your values you know I remember being told you know your values when you know truly what they are will explain everything yeah. and I remember going yeah 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 whatever whatever and and until I saw my values written on a flip chart on a wall in the room that we were using and I just looked at my I said to my breakthrough partner I was like that that explains everything that yeah. explains exactly why I'm sat here doing this with you yeah because those values have got me so far but they're not the values that I need to spur me on to achieve yeah. the things I know I'm capable of um you know and as you say you know being away from motivated and, and let's be honest you know for people listening to this podcast the chances are 80 90 or more percent of you will be away from motivated that is normal um because um you know life happens to us we have the knocks of life you know we have fears we have things that we're scared of and that's normal but to be motivated to move because you have to get away from the yeah. stuff that you don't want is a I got to try quite a negative energy as in you're doing it because you have to do it it's very much about necessity and but you do it because you have to as opposed to as you say when you're 100 percent focused on what you want the closer you get to that goal the more that goal is going to pull you in mm -hmm. um and it's hugely hugely exciting um and, you know and and to be the other side of that i always say to people you know when you take clients through a breakthrough process you have to remember that the person that you're coaching at the beginning of the day is not the same person that you're coaching at the end of the day Yes. really it isn't and as you say you know that transformation and, and I also just want to say one thing as well because I know a lot of people kind of go wow that's like that's significant change um you know the the this isn't about turning you into someone different right mm. and I know and maybe you can share a little bit of your thoughts on this Louisa but a lot of people kind of go okay that sounds like a lot of change in a very short period of time like will I still be the person that I am like or are you going to give me like a personality transplant or, or whatever and I I describe it a little bit by you version 3.0 like you are still who you are aren't you afterwards yeah. so just maybe can you allay some people's yeah. fear a little bit about that process because I do think transformational change at such speed sometimes just scare people a little bit yeah, I, I, I get that. Um, but no, I mean, first of all, you are in control. These are all, as the client, you know, as the person experiencing the transformational change, throughout it, you are in control of what is being changed and, and what you want to change it to. And the, the, the process and the techniques are designed to ensure it comes from you as the client. So nothing was imposed on me. It wasn't what my coach thought I should be it was how I wanted to be the decision my new decisions my the values the, the process supports the values come from me not just the values that I had but the values my new values um, and yes you know you might have discussions around it but it's it's you are in control of it nothing's happening to you as the client that you don't want to so that's really important I think to understand um the 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 What's my other thing? I've just lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it's not nothing that, that happens. It is fast, the transformation, but it's, like I say, it's about really just being focused on, on where you want to go. I don't want to repeat myself, but I'm going to need to here. But it is about removing the distractions in your life that aren't serving you well. Um, 
all the things that, and it doesn't mean you don't care about anyone anymore. It doesn't mean that you're not going to help others and that you're not going to do anything. It's you're more equipped to because you haven't got all this distraction and negative energy where you're spending worrying about things that might not happen or the what ifs and, and the maybes. And the it's it's just that it's, it's like a clarity, a confidence, um, a knowing and that is just so powerful. And in terms of personality, I would say my personality is I am still who I am and I haven't changed. And I have checked in with my husband a couple of times. He likes me now better. <laughs> but he says, you know, he was worried. Um, I've never talked about this before, but he said, oh, I don't want you to change. And I said, I'm not going to change. I'll just be better. I'll be I'll be happier. I'll be calmer. I'll be who, you know it'll be a better thing, I promise. And it, that promise is, is stood. Um, you don't change who you are. It's just about your behaviors and how you turn up each day. And it's that self-care aspect as well. I, I, I know everyone's different and I can only speak for myself, but it's just given me such calm, confidence and focus um, to help still do all the things that I still wanted to do. I'm just better at doing it. And I, I before I wouldn't have said all these things about myself, I would have struggled, but I can, I can sit here and say, I am, I am better. I am confident. I am calm. I am happy. I am good. Um, I'm, you know, I, I'm better than good, you know, and that doesn't mean that I've got a massive ego. So my personality hasn't changed. It's just, I'm saying what I need to say to be able to get the message across. Who's talking? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my God. I just absolutely love it. I just, I just, and that you've described it perfectly. Oh, good. Um, and um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's amazing. Um, listen, I want to talk a little bit more about Incredible You, if that's okay. Because, uh, you know, I just, I know people are going to be interested. And um, thank you for those of you that are watching here on the Facebook Live and for your comments. Um, some wonderful feedback. Thank you so much. Louise is an amazing coach. I really want to work, Louise. Um, and some lovely comments about me too. I'm the bee's knees. And, and that's all wonderful. And, and um, you know, and, and if you're looking for a coach, um, I, I suggest, well, we'll give you Louise's contact details at the end, but she is an awesome, awesome coach. Um, so, Louisa, I just want to talk a little bit then because I'm conscious of time. We've been here for 56 minutes already. <gasps> Um, so when so yeah so we're gonna we're gonna move on with the last section of the interview um I'd like you if it's okay with you to share a little bit of information about how you now help people because everything that you have described about yourself and the changes for you personally I know you now go on to deliver for all the amazing people that you now work with um as a coach within your business incredible you um now um can I get you maybe to give, and obviously don't share any names or anything, that's absolutely fine, but could I just get you to maybe give an example of someone that you've worked with, just to give people an idea of, of how you help people with the toolkit that you've got now? Yeah, I mean, there's so many I could pick from, and sometimes people think that um, it's always a long, uh, you know, it's a number of sessions or it's a long process. Um, I've helped people do uh, what some might think are minor things, but actually they're huge things for them. And we some some things we sort out in a session and then we'll work on something else. Um, but uh, an example would be, um, well, I've had a couple, particularly in these times where people have gone through a redundancy and they've been looking at interviews and their confidence is really, really low. So I've done work with them and, um, you know, they've got the job not because of what I've not not because of me but because they were able to turn up on the day and be able to represent themselves well um but alongside that has been a lot of anxiety issues that people have had during these times as well um so I'm helping people with sleep issues so there's lots of different types of things but one is um really interesting um when I talk about things that aren't big, I, I for some, even just somebody had a nail biting uh, issue for their whole life, they bit their nails. And um, within the 12 minutes, 
they haven't bitten their nails since and that was like three months ago so like it's little things like that that you can help people with um but I love working with people um one-to-one -one. I, I do some group coaching stuff as well but um on the one-to-one -one stuff it, it's great because like I said it's not about me telling people what to do or doing things to them it's about us working in partnership so they achieve the goals or the outcomes from the sessions that they want um I when I started Incredible You I very focused on about helping people with clarity and focus but during these times we've adapted you know we all need to adapt and what I found is a lot of people are struggling with that worry overwhelm anxiety um and sleep and I found that that's been really powerful to be able to help people with those issues um because you know as I like I've mentioned I was living in an anxious way through my life which resulted in high levels of stress um and we can do stuff about it so they're the most powerful um things I think people are really like oh my god so can you find that do you how do you feel about that now and you get that moment where they're like you can see them looking for it and it just totally changes I just love it I love helping people where they're struggling with something that whatever that is really but you know anxiety is so debilitating and um, the impact on our body is so de debilitating. So I've done a lot of work around that. And I'm uh, so I'm developing some courses around that as well to help people, because there's clearly so many people out there who are dealing with um, the, those problems. Have I answered your question there, Laura? Laura? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, in a roundabout sort of way. Yes, you have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, no, you honestly, yeah, you have. I mean, I think I just want to give people an opportunity because we've talk, so, spent so much time talking in the episode today about you. Um, and I wanted you to have the opportunity to explain a little bit about some of the people yeah. that you've gone on to help. Um, you know, one of the things that I think a lot of coaches get attracted to NLP is all this fast change work. Um, and being able to help people get out of their own way in a fraction of the time that executive coaching takes or a fraction of the time that counselling might take if it's more in a therapeutic context and things like that. And when you can literally, as you say, see people have that moment where you say to them, right, so how do you feel now about that old problem? And they're trying to find the old problem and they're looking like confused as if to say, what problem? And you're like, yeah. well, you know, that problem that we've been working on, well, well, no, it's it's fine. And, it, and, it, and it's just amazing to do the techniques. Um, one of the things that, um, we talk a lot about master prac more so than prac is the subtlety of some of the changes so a lot of people like I say come to NLP because they're like right I want to do a belief change I want to do a you know switch pattern help someone feel differently I want to get rid of their internal conflict and we've got techniques for all of that but actually at master prac a lot of the content is what we call conversational change so bringing about change simply through a conversation and sometimes simply a well-placed question or a well-placed mm. challenge is sometimes all someone needs to start to think differently about themselves and about the situation. Um, and I'm guessing, you know, you've had experiences of helping people in that way as well as with the techniques. Yeah, I mean, that's been just incredible to even in even if people because you know people come to you but naturally with the you know they've they talk about a problem that they've got and you can help them in that moment it as you said in a very natural conversation to help them think things through differently for example with someone they were having a lot of problems at work and through talking to them they were able to not bring that issue home to understand what they could control and um what was out with their control and to empower them to, you know, turn up how they wanted to and not let so many things affect them. And that was through a conversation. Um, there's been so many things. What I would say, whilst the techniques are, are fast, a lot of them, coaching with me is not like that. I tailor each coaching package to my clients. I mentioned for, at the very beginning about listening. That's been my biggest thing. I really don't speak sometimes I'm just listening to what someone's saying and I only speak when they finished so that I can really get to grips with helping them and some people want quick and fast changes and some people want a bit more of an experience they want more um, to talk about things so really 
I feel like I've got this massive tool bag and then it's like a an assortment box of chocolates, let's say. <laughs> and then I go in and I get it. Which ones are going to be the rep the best to to work with these these people, um, these wonderful clients that I've got, and I I hope to have more people that I can help in the future. It's very much tailored um, rather than a one size fits all. So, but the language part is huge. It's it's so important, um, and like I said earlier, the communication, you know, not just what we say, how we you know how we are. Um, so I really try to create the right environment. Um, I do. I put a hundred. I put everything into giving my all to the clients that I work with, so that they get the outcomes that not that I want, that they want. Um, so yeah, I got all warm fuzzy feeling. <laughs> I'm like, oh, um, and your clients, I know, are hugely, hugely grateful. I mean, if you follow uh, Louise on social media. Um, you know, you've only got to look at some of those uh, testimonials that you your clients give you, um, and they're just phenomenal. Um, so, uh, yeah, Louisa, thank you so much for your oh, time thank today. You. It's and I feel amazing. like we've only scratched the surface, and I'm thinking I've been here for ages with you, and and there's so much more we could talk about. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm going to ask you a few quick fire questions. So as you know, this is how we end the podcast episodes. Um, you've got no idea what I'm going to ask you. So um, bear with her, folks. She'll probably get it right. She'll probably be like bang, bang, bang on the many like normal. I'm setting my intention now. <coughs> I love it. I love it. Sorry, just choking on my squash. <laughs> um, right, let's go. So if you could be any age you want to be, what age would you want to be? how I, I, I am now. I believe life experience has brought me to this point. Um, and what I do next is the only person that's down to is me. So bring it on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What's your favourite word? Joy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And you've talked about that today, which has been brilliant. Um, cool. What does unleash your potential mean to you? You're gonna have to shut me up here, Laura, because supposed to be quick. I, okay, I'll make it quick. At least the potential to change my life, and more importantly, you have, Laura. Um, I stumbled across it, and it's just at a time I needed it most in my life. It's come, it's delivered way more than I ever expected, and I know it's going to continue with delivering. So it's just been life changing. Well, thank you. Right, one more. Um, what's the one thing that you really want to do that you've never done so far in your life? Do you know what popped into my head, Laura? I'm going to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> if I want to do it, I'm doing it. So um, there you go. I know where I want to go and I'm on the pathway. So I, I, I'm going to struggle to answer that one. Fair dues to you. I'm Fair happy. Dues. I'm a happy chappy. I chappy. love it. I love it. Well, so Louisa, um, I know people are going to have loved listening to your story, and there's a few people on the live today that have said your story is so inspirational, um, and I could not agree more. Oh, um, thank now, you. if people are looking to find out more about you, your coaching, and your business, maybe they're looking for a coach and they'd like to chat with you. Um, what is the best way for them to contact you? So I'm on the social media channels, LinkedIn and Facebook and uh, Louisa Thomas on LinkedIn and um, uh, Incredible You on Facebook. And I've also got a website, www.incredible-u.co.uk. So um, yeah, please just, and just drop me a message, whatever you find easiest way to get in touch, give me a call. I'd love to chat to you. So uh, yeah, Amazing. please call me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So do you go and check out uh, Louise's social media profiles and um, her website. So incredible hyphen you dot co dot UK um, and go and check out her website and all of her contact details will be on her website anyway. Um, so, yeah, um, Louisa, thank you so much again. It's been such a pleasure hearing your story and plug, for me plugging in some of the gaps of bits I didn't know. And I know um, that our listeners are going to have loved this episode. So thank you so much for giving oh. us your 
time and being so open and sharing your journey and your story. And I know it's going to inspire hundreds of people when we officially launch this podcast in a few weeks time. Um, so um, thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been brilliant. Right. Well, we'll say goodbye, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. Thank um, you, everyone. And, um, we'll let you know. I think the next podcast is coming up. The live sneak preview um, is coming up, I think, on the 6th of October. Yes, yeah, 6th of October. Uh, we've got Kay, who is a consultant anaesthetist, talking about how she's been using her skills um, mm. in her role with her all her trainees. So that's going to be another exciting episode. So stay tuned for that. But um, take care, everybody, and we will see you soon. Bye.